throughout the Bible, certain individuals stand out. They were led and empowered by the Spirit of God. Yes. Many of those men and women were prophets, judges, kings, leaders of God's people. I, I look back at some of them and I see in their lives that they were a nobody until the Spirit of God came upon them. Yes, amen. And when the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, they, they were turned into different individuals and yes. empowered and equipped by the Spirit of God. Yes. It, it is an amazing thing. Uh, I, I think one of the ones that is so notable is King Saul. How that when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he was, the scripture says he was turned into a different man. Mm -hmm. And he prophesied with the prophets. It's amazing what will happen when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and empowers us. Yes, amen. Isaiah prophesied about the coming of one who would be the Messiah. The favor of God would be upon him. He would be the Redeemer, the Messiah of, of, of God. One in whom the Spirit of the Lord would rest. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord would be witnessed upon him. Isaiah 11 says, By the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Yes. That is a powerful statement. <clears throat> That when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, the Spirit of counsel, might, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and the fear of the Lord would rest upon Jesus. Yes. Now I know, and you know, that Jesus was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. But according to the scripture, he did nothing in his ministry to achieve the things that God had called him to do until the spirit of the Lord descended upon him. And from that moment, when the spirit of the Lord came upon him, Jesus went out from that moment and ministered in the power of the spirit, being led by the spirit. He went out and did the works of God. And it seems like the spirit of God and Jesus Christ had a direct communication link to the Father in heaven. Yes. Listen to me, please. It's noteworthy in our lives that any time the Holy Spirit comes on any man or woman, there is going to be a manifestation of the character, nature, power of God in their lives. You're going to be changed. Yes. It is impossible, friends. Listen to me. It's impossible for the Spirit of God to touch your life and you remain as you were before the Spirit of God came upon you. That's right. As a direct result of the Spirit of the Lord coming upon Jesus Christ. He had been baptized in the Jordan River and he went out in the power of the Spirit. But after that moment, when the Spirit came upon him in the form of a, of a dove and remained upon him, not the dove, but the Spirit, the Spirit of God remained upon him. Jesus went out in the power of the Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, and he did ministry, miracles, signs, wonders, Thousands upon thousands, listen to me, thousands upon thousands of people were healed by the power of Jesus Christ because the Spirit of God was working on him in such a powerful way. That anointing and power that was resting upon him, it, it seems to me, from my understanding, that it was a little bit different than with some people because... The Spirit rested upon Christ without measure. Yes, it did. Yes. I'm still growing in the power and the knowledge of, of God. The Spirit's taking me from one glory to another, from one measure to another. But when the Spirit came upon Jesus, he, it, the Spirit came upon him without measure. And he went out and he ministered in a full anointing, in the full power of the Holy Spirit upon his life. It seems to me that Jesus 
in that anointing and in that power, knew exactly what was in the mind of the Father. Here's what happens. Listen, it's not just something that happened with Jesus. It happens in everyone who is spirit led and spirit empowered. The Holy Spirit will make you, help you to know what is in the mind and the heart of the Father. Jesus went in that and ministered. Here's something that's going to happen to every one of us. You are going to have that same anointing, that same power that rested upon him when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The scripture tells us it's uh, sort of the uh, statement of faith of Jesus that he went out and he ministered to the poor. Yes. He preached good news. Yes. He proclaimed liberty to those that were captives, yes. prisoners. He delivered those that were oppressed by the devil. He healed the sick. Jesus did wonderful things. The one thing that I've often wondered, why? Why did he do so many miracles? Why? Why, when the Holy Spirit comes and empowers and leads us, do so many miracles happen? But it's happened frequently throughout the history of the church. Right. You look at it. Uh, you, you can, some people have had what they call miracle crusades. But I'll tell you, you can have any service in any place across the globe. It doesn't matter if it's thousands of people or five people or two people. Wherever they are gathered together in the name of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord starts moving, things start happening in our bodies. Things start happening in our minds and in our spirits. There's a change that takes place. The forces of darkness are broken when the spirit of God comes in. There's another message there that I will only want to mention. When the Spirit of God is not working, there's going to be all kinds of darkness come in. Hallelujah. Think about it. That's just Jesus. Keep us pure. So as Jesus began ministering, people began recognizing the favor, the grace of God. Yes. It is the grace of God that saves us. It is the favor, the goodness of God that brings us, bring, brings us out of all of these situations. During Jesus' ministry, he told his disciples that the same spirit that rested upon him was going to be poured out upon them and ultimately on everyone who believed. Yes, amen. This is the same message that Isaiah and Joel prophesied by the Spirit of the Lord. Isaiah in chapter 32 and 15, Isaiah said, The Spirit will be poured upon us from on high. Joel prophesied, You shall know that I am in the midst. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. So a testimony of the Lord being in our midst is the presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon us. Yes. You didn't hear me. The testimony of the Lord's presence is the Spirit of God being poured upon us. Amen. It is a testimony that God is near when the Holy Spirit starts moving in our midst. Oh, even so come. Hallelujah. At one meeting with his disciples after his resurrection, Jesus breathed. Ooh. I would not be audacious enough to, today to come and breathe on you. <laughs> But Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. Acts 1 and 8, he said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 2. The Holy Spirit was poured upon them and they were turned into different people. The power of the Spirit of God was upon them. It is a testimony of God's presence. They, they are going to be recognized and known by this extending and expanding 
expanded ministry of Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit is moving on the host of believers. You are going to have the same kind of ministry that Jesus had. You said, well, I haven't been called into the ministry. Oh, yes, you have. You are a believer. You have received the Holy Spirit and what he is wanting to do in you. God wants to use you as, a, as an insight, a light in a dark world so that people will see in you the power of Christ, the Spirit of God resting upon you. John 16 and verse 13. Jesus demonstrated this. He said, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Hold on there. When the spirit comes upon you, he will speak to you, through you. Verse 14, he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine, making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. Hallelujah. That is why I said the Spirit will take what is mine and make it known to you. So here's what the Holy Spirit's going to do. All of the profound riches of what belongs to God belongs to Jesus Christ and now it belongs to you so that the very things that Jesus was owner of, that Jesus ministered from, he's making that known to you so that you have that working in your life. I want you to watch what happens when we become spirit led and empowered by the spirit of truth. First of all, he will guide us into all truth. So the Holy Spirit will guide you into things that you could not know, you could not study and know without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you into truth. There's another outlying message. He will guide you so that you know what is error yes. and what is true. Hallelujah. It's a it's a terrible thing when we don't know that something is wrong and we become gullible and take in anything. The spirit will take you and show you this is true and that is not true. It's very important, friends, in these last days when there are seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that are being propagated in this world that we know by the Spirit of God, this is true, this is not true, this is of God, and this is not of God. Hallelujah. He will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. I, the Holy Spirit can break a sound bear. I cannot today tell you by my ears what God is saying in heaven. There's none of you have that capacity either. No. Because there is a barrier between us and heaven. But here's what the Holy Spirit is doing. It's better than two tin cans and a string. That's right. It's better than a cell phone. That's right. The Spirit of God who lives in you is also working in heaven and he knows everything that is going on in the presence of heaven. I feel one of the messages that the Holy Spirit is preaching to us right now is it's not going to be long until Jesus Christ comes and takes the church home. I believe he's speaking that to us with such clarity that we cannot in any way be caught off guard. The Holy Spirit wants you to know, friends, that this is what's going on in the Father's mind. I see by the Spirit, there's a disturbance in heaven going on right now. And God is saying, I can't tolerate this much more. It's about time for, for you, Jesus, to go back and bring my children home. I believe it's going to happen soon. That's a message of the Holy Spirit. He will announce and to declare to you the things that will happen in the future. I think I already covered that. There is, there is, there is clarity here. Yeah. With the things that are going on in our world, I don't have to tell you what's in the news. Israel, Ukraine, the United States, China, the world, the church. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God is saying something's about to happen. That's right. 
Oh, there's a stir. Do you feel that stir of the Spirit? Is he stirring us up? He's saying something is coming. Equip yourself right now. Get, get full of power. Equip yourself with knowledge. Be prepared for the future. The events that have been prophesied for a long time are about to take place. The Holy Spirit will reveal Christ to us. Here's what the Holy Spirit, he will reveal, declare the glory of the Lord and his victory and his power and, and his position to us. And when he starts doing this, it's this from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. He says, this is what Jesus has done. This is what he's continuing to do. And this is what he's going to do. He keeps on taking us higher and higher and farther and farther so that we know more and more. This is what the Lord is doing in us. Yes. Yes, thank you, Jesus. He's revealing Christ. And he will honor and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ by opening our understanding and declaring to us and disclosing to us the things that belong to the Father. There is a clarity that is happening from the Holy Spirit that we have not had. Have you noticed? I hope you have. That in the last 10 years, 20 years, there has been increased knowledge in the things of God. Yes. Have you seen it? <laughs> As you begin to grow in the Lord, what this is, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is saying, this is Jesus, and this is not Jesus. This is of God, and this is not of God. And if you are hearing what the Spirit is saying, you will be drawing yourself ever closer to the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is taking everything. <laughs> That's a big, this is big. Everything that belongs to Christ and he's making it known to us. Hmm. You can't dwell in the level that you were in 20 years ago. I thank God for the outpouring of the spirit that took place in the 1919s and 1909 and 1920s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. That that I saw as a child. Yes. I, I wasn't around in 1919. <laughs> Just in case you were thinking that. But I have I have seen so many things by the the witness of the Holy Spirit that God has done. I, I feel this. The best days are yet to come. Yes, they are. Joel said, in the last days, we're in the last of the last. In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. On oh, my servants and on oh, my handmaids, I will pour out my spirit, says the Lord. This is going to happen. It is happening right now. God is going to send the greatest revival that has happened in the world. And he's disclosing this. He's making it known. These things belong to God, but he's making them real to us. <laughs> you know, you cannot understand or know the things, the blessings of his favor if the Holy Spirit is not working in us. This is why some people look at the things of the Spirit of God and it's foolishness. It's much easier to play games. It's much easier to entertain than it is to have a move of the Spirit. Because they do not understand the move of the Spirit. They do not understand the work of their ears. Their eyes are dull or, or without the ability to see. They are darkened in their understanding. We need the church. Could I, could I prophesy the church today needs a, a renewing of their eyesight, a renewing of their ears so they can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. I think what the Holy Spirit is doing, what God is striving, I feel that striving. He's wanting to bridge the gap from heaven to earth. And he's doing that by the work of the Spirit in you. Amen. 
through the Spirit. The Scripture says we will be enabled to comprehend with all saints what is the width, length, depth, and height, and to be filled with all the fullness of God. So God is making his favor personally known by the Spirit. Yes, amen. I can't, I can't tell you that this is going to happen unless and until the Holy Spirit has free access to your life. Are you willing to say, have your way with me? I'm, I'm willing to be used. I want the Spirit of God to flow upon me, to fall upon me, to be poured out upon me. Jesus said when the Spirit comes, He will guide you into some things. He will guide us into things that will bring life, bring glory, and bring power. The Holy Spirit is the responsible agent. So if you want life, if you want power, if you want glory, if you want the answers that you've been needing, you need the Holy Spirit, church. You need the Holy Spirit working in your life and you need to surrender to His, His will, to His work in your life. Would you pray even, Holy Spirit, come, use me, fill me. Amen. <laughs> I want, I want the full magnitude of God's favor. Yes. I, I think much is being said today about the favor of God. I want his favor, but the only way that we will truly know his favor is in his presence. Yes. And in his presence, it happens every time when his presence is known. His spirit comes in, in power and in great glory. Yes, amen. We should be asking ourselves, what is it that Jesus achieved? Now, I, I go back to the Gospels. And when I read the Gospels, I see multiple things that Jesus did while he was here. Mm -hmm. Those things that Jesus did was by the power of the Spirit. Ask yourself this question. Should, should the church today see the same kinds of things that Jesus did in his ministry? Do you think we should? Should we see the blind eye open, the lame walk, the lepers cured, yes. the incurable disease removed? Amen. Let's go way out yonder. Everyone in the room healed. Yes. Amen. Could we see that? Is it even possible? Uh, I think if it is covered by the blood of Jesus, if it is covered by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we should be seeing it. And the way that we are going to be seeing it is by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. So here's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's bringing into effect everything that has been accomplished by Jesus Christ in us. So if Jesus achieved it, it's going to happen yes. when the Holy Spirit is working. Hallelujah. Mark 16 and verse 20. It says, The Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. Now what happened in their ministries and lives is seen in the book of Acts. Let me do a very rapid survey. Chapter 3, 6, a crippled man was healed and made to walk. Chapter 5 and 15, Peter walked down the street. Wherever his shadow passed over the sick, they were healed. Yes. Acts 6, 8, Stephen did great wonders and signs among the people. And they were not able, ungodly people were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Hallelujah. Acts 8 and 7, unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed and many paralyzed and lame were healed. Acts 9 and 34, Peter and Aeneas. Peter told Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you, arise and take your bed. Then he arose immediately. Chapter 14 and 9, Paul told a man who was crippled from birth, stand on your feet and he leaped up and walked. 
Acts 19 and 20, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases and evil spirits left them. Let me tell you something. It wasn't because of the sweat of, of Paul's body. It was because of the spirit of God that was resting upon him. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. Everyone on the island who had diseases came and were healed. Romans 15 and verse 18. Paul said, I will dare not, I, I, I will dare, I will not dare to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So here he is. Here's a man who's highly educated. He says, I'm not going to talk in about anything that I have accomplished personally. The only thing I'm going to declare to you is what the Spirit of God is doing through me. Yes. I, I, I see too many today that are talking about all of the things that they have done. And they need to be talking about what the Spirit of God is doing in us. Amen. Let us eye, let our eyes be turned to what God is doing in our midst. Why were there so many signs, wonders, and miracles? Because I can't do them. Paul can't do them. Peter can't do them. John can't do them. But the Holy Spirit working in you can do things that you think are impossible. That's right. Mm. First John 5 and 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world. When God's presence is made known by the works of the Holy Spirit, things are going to start happening. It has been my prayer since I have been the pastor of this church that God would start moving in this church with signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit in ways that we have never witnessed. And I'll tell you, folks, that is going to be a tall order because I have seen God do some mighty things. I have witnessed those that could not walk, walk. I have witnessed those with back pain being healed. I have witnessed those that could not hear being healed given their hearing and those that were blind being given their sight and people who were dying rising, rising up from their bed I know he can do it I believe he's going to do it again but I believe he's going to do it in a greater manner than he's ever done it before <laughs> see this is the normal life of the spirit filled believer spirit empowered believer yes the Spirit will lead us. He will empower us into an overcoming life of victory. This is going to happen. I don't know what it's going to do with you. Can I be bold with you? I think some of you are all of a sudden are going to be with someone that you have come upon that has a need and a boldness is going to come. And it's not going to be yours. It'll be the Spirit. And you're not going to be passive about it. There are going to be mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit working through you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you are going to be praying about things on your workplace, mm -hmm. and you're going to see God move in. Yes, yes. Not only will they stop doing the things they were doing, they're going to start doing some things that they need to be doing. Yes. Thank you, Some of you in your family, you're going to see a dynamic change as the Spirit of God starts moving in and there's going to be victories. I believe in God that there's going to be such a radical, mighty sign and wonder of the presence of God and His favor upon us that the Holy Spirit will usher in in these last days. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just in case you don't know it. This is available to every one of you. Mm -hmm. 